Hello everybody, welcome to the World Cup first round matchup between Velahopia and Parmenian. Um, Velahopia won the coin toss with his humans, chose to receive to get the bashing started early and made a Kaz instantly. Um, pretty good. Didn't go mighty blow on his team. A lot of a lot of human players went mighty blow um, on at least somebody. He didn't. He went three guarders, a tackler, a block on his ogre, and a block throw. I actually quite like the block throw against Woodies. I think that's a pretty pretty strong pick, really. Um, Velahopia qualified by winning champs ladder, PC champs ladder, with humans last season, which is an unbelievable accomplishment. Also, the team he won with was completely unspectacular. It didn't have... I would have expected for humans to win champs ladder, they would need like, you know, a strength 5 blitzer or a movement 10 catcher or something, but it was just like a normal human team, so that's amazing from Velahopia there to do that. And he's got a 72% win rate in champs ladder with, with human team. Over like 200, nearly 300 games with humans. 72% uh, win rates, that's really incredible. Um, so he's basically playing with his, his favourite team in a rule set that favours them after winning Champs Ladder with a rule set that doesn't favour them. So, Vela Hobby has definitely got to be one of the favourites to win the tournament, really. Now, that, that being said, that doesn't mean that he's got a great chance to win it or to win any given game, just due to, you know, the other coaches being good and all the dice involved. Um, Parmenian qualified by winning a French league, JOL. Um, he hasn't played much in Champs Ladder at all, but he has got a 62% win rate over a few games with Dark Elves, but can't read much into that. Just low sample size. Um, he's gone leader. I, I'm not sure I like leader, because I don't think Dark Elves try as much dodgy stuff as Wood Elves do. So I think I would try to get away with the two rerolls and just get more blodge. Um, he has got a Witch and four Blitzers. Two with dodge and uh, wrestle for the witch. So, kind of, kind of a standard team. Most people have gone for this. Like most people haven't gone for a. Most people have gone a run around uh, two re rolls and an apple. Um, he's used his apple already on that KO because he didn't want to be three men down. I think I wouldn't have done. I think I'd have given up this half and saved the apple for a perm. Um, it seems it feels horrible to give up the half on turn one though, so I guess that's why I did it. So yeah, pretty pretty big uh, thing. I don't know. I think this is so yeah, giving away a few blocks isn't great. Um, Velahop has gone for kind of an anti anti wood elf cage of uh, getting guard around the ball, and there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with being a completely having a completely safe cage. Is there? At the end of the day, even you don't need a war dance or anything to five plus in and one dice. So I think that's that's fine to have the guards away from the fight, but um, a little bit tricky. I think it's more more playing like against Wood Elves than Dark Elves with that, with that first, second turn. But it's fair enough because mid to the two removals, so, you know, want to be conservative from that point, don't you? Well, there's two ways. Basically, I think, I think if I was two men up, I would be wanting to not lose my advantage, whereas I think Ducky would be wanting to push his advantage. Um, that's just my opinion. You know, I'm not saying that I know everything about Ducky, but... Ducky's just an example, you know, um, of how of how people can be really good, but have slightly different opinions on things and different ways of doing things. And and I'm pretty confident that Ducky would be wanting to push this advantage, where while I would just be wanting to not let it slip. Um, and it looks like Vela Hoppy is playing the don't let it slip route here with having this super safe cage, not even moving it forward one square. Wow. Well, yeah, I guess because of the surfs. Yeah, I, d I don't think it's that extreme rogue shenanigans, but I do think that's kind of how Ducky looks to push the would look to push the advantage. 
And if I'm not seeing his crap at all, no. <laughs> that was exactly that's exactly why I used Ducky as the example, rather than literally anybody else, because everyone who follows Blood Bowl knows that uh, you know Ducky is is the uh, king of champs ladder really in terms of performance, uh, winning winning all the time. And it's not just because of his few games with Brett's, it's just in general in in all of in all of the games that I see Ducky play, that's kind of how he plays in my opinion. Huge double skulls there. That a quad skulls would have been horrible there, wouldn't it? <laughs> oh <dear. laughs> so yeah, by not moving up and by see this is the problem though, see by Valahopia kinda of playing safe and not moving up, he's got himself into a bit of a pickle here, hasn't he? The uh He's under a lot of pressure now, despite the uh, despite the Dark Elves being down two players. So, you know, had he chosen the, the different tack of trying to push his advantage more, maybe he wouldn't have. But this is looking pretty horrible now, isn't it? The, the Dark Elves can kind of leave these two guys behind and leave this guy behind and intersect the whole team here. <laughs> oh dear, chat. Chat being chat. And he doesn't really go for it, does he? He doesn't really go for it here, Armenian. He he, he he goes a bit safer. I think I think this would have been the turn um to really pile on the pressure here from Parminian. I I really think it should have been, I've and again, that's just my opinion. It doesn't mean I'm right and he's wrong. <laughs> um, I think this was really a turn for for Parmenian to apply pressure there. I think, you know, the pressure was somewhat invited and he's kind of missed his chance, maybe. But we'll see. There was an easy surf, yeah. I missed that this turn. Um, I missed it watching the replay here. But yeah, there was an easy surf. When I was watching it live, I said, oh, apparently French people don't do surfs. <laughs> and there was an easy surf. But I preferred applying pressure. But then, so yeah, if you're not gonna, if you're not gonna pressure hard, like he could have done that turn, I think you go for the surf for sure. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, there was there was an easy surfy there. Yeah, I I, sh I should have I should have mentioned that. Um, but yeah, I think I think if he wasn't gonna batter the cage that turn and and try to split his team and everything, he should have hundred percent gone for the surf. But they were absolutely rock hard today. <laughs> And so was my cock. This is a huge chaos now, isn't it? Even up the odds here. What's this? Three, three, three out for the Dark Elves and two out for the humans. His decision to Apple is looking better now, isn't it? But again, he's not really Get getting pressure little on. Cunt. <laughs> but I mean, I guess that now, now it's okay. Now when you look at the turn counter. Now it's okay that he's not putting pressure on because now Velahopia has been hemmed in anyway. And so so now I think not putting pressure on is okay because you've got the you've got the kind of L screen here, but he has let him switch sides. This is a little bit weak here. He has let him switch sides and move forward. But um yeah, he can actually get quite far forward. But still, next turn if he screens here, it's gonna be hard for Velahopia. So like he had he had randomly not made any progress at all as <laughs> he fell up here till turn six when he had to, and then he was able to. He he knows he knows that French people don't surf, so he'll he'll do that no problem. <laughs> and then a KO there, so it's equal equal numbers. 
I, I would I, I would want to go for the surf there. I, I mean, that's this is obviously a conscious decision, so that if he goes for the surf, you know, he takes people away from screening here. So this would take a lot of self-control to not go for. But I think I would go for it just because this guy is actually a scoring threat and you can probably get enough in the way that you can still surf him as well. But he's he's not going for it. Instead he's going for a cage dive. Wow. Oh, I don't like the cage dive. <laughs> Personally. I, I would have gone for either the surf or the trying to make things really, really solid in the centre. Uh, I don't think it was the time to cage dive. In my opinion, of course, he, uh, Palmini thought it was, but um, I think that's a, it was a bit, a bit strange with only two turns left for Villahobie, you know, I think he was in the way. I think either go as much in the way as you can or take the surf and try to get a little bit in the way and hope this frees him out on the last turn. He did go for a 5 plus there. Yeah, maybe maybe it was a rush of blood. Maybe, um, I mean, it's 55% to make it, but... You can be my wingman anytime. Bullshit. You can be mine. <laughs> Thanks, Space Cadet 404. You can be my wingman anytime. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know what he was thinking there. That that gave that gave Velahopi exactly what he needed to get into normal scoring range. He doesn't even need a GFI. Now going for the five plus in seems like a good idea because it's his only chance. Maybe he can get something out in front. But um <laughs> Oh dear Epiphany. Yeah, I think that was I mean, it would look great if it had worked, wouldn't it? But I think that was maybe not the play there. So yeah, easy as you like now. Maybe even a three dice, I'm not sure. No, I, guess, I guess he couldn't three dice it. But two dice for a push to score is pretty good, isn't it? There you go, one nil at the half. Nine, nine aside? Oh no, the humans have the reserve, don't they? So it's nine versus ten currently. But the hu the the dark elves are down to ten at max, and Velahobi still has his apothecary available, and could go back very likely to have eleven for the second half. So, I mean, the Dark Elves do have a chance of a, of a one turn, and they do have Frenzy, so they could do something. So, like, setting up one back like this is a little bit risky now, due to the Frenzy, the frenzy being an option. He, I would be tempted just to take the Surf here, and, you know, maybe go men up. It's a really hard one turn with movement seven. Um, and he's got the Ogre there, so he's got a hit from here. He's got a Guard, so it's just going to be a one dice. And you've got to use the whole method. It's it's a really hard one turn. Maybe you'd have to dodge here and uphill. Or, or dodge here and uphill or something. Really, really hard one turn there. Um, so I'd be tempted just to surf. And hope for a riot. No, quick snap means, means he might have got the one turn. Does just go for the serve. I, I think that's fair. <laughs> that was a gym serve, if ever I've seen it. I'd be, I'd have, I would have gone for that serve, and then I'd be like, why didn't I look at my sheet? What was the point of trying to make that serve? Yeah, it did. Yeah, exactly, anti-reborn. It looked a bit directionless, that. That was a bit weird. 
But you know, th there is a lot of pressure. You know, as anybody who's in the in the tournament will att testify to. Um, you know, there it is. There is pressure all the way through, isn't there? So you know, there's there's emotions as well. You know, maybe he just got nervous, or or maybe he thought he was getting hard done by with the apple gone and the players out. You know. There's lots of reasons to make a suboptimal move, isn't there? So yeah, only nine for the dark elves and a full eleven for the humans. So it's gonna be it's gonna be tricky, but they do have dodge and agility four, so they play better down men, you know, better than most teams, don't they, elves? <laughs> Pedro. Yeah. I'm not being mean to anybody. Let me just, for the millionth time, make that disclaimer. What I'd be, what I'd be honestly, seriously tempted to do here, if I was the Dark Elves, would be to go for the 4 plus serve. Um, just because all things being equal, he's probably going to lose, isn't he? And a 75% dodge to surf a guy, it's not even that bad. Oh. And if I had done, boy would I have been brutally punished by a blitz. <laughs> <laughs> wow, I would be I would be fuming. I'd be like the one time I go for this risky move. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, that's a little bit brutal, isn't it? The guy who's two players up gets a blitz, and you know there's no real. And and to be fair, he probably set up just about as he could against a blitz, just about as well as he could against a blitz, didn't he? Really. With nine players, four on the LOS, uh, uh, you know, four off off the LOS, kind of screening a little bit, and one back. He probably did about as good as he could against a blitz there. I like I like the move there, obviously to catch it and uh, and otherwise play quite conservatively. Obviously, if he based up everybody, it would have been a bit trickier to get the ball back. But um, yeah, he does the right thing of. Blitzing this way, so it's two dice into the three dice. But yeah, that's that's horrible. Like, and they get blitz and take another card. So you know, you got you, you, He's definitely Valhopi has definitely had the better of the dice, hasn't he? I mean, he's <laughs> he's made two cards and two KOs. The K, one one of the KOs hasn't recovered, and the other one was apple. And that doesn't mean that I'm dissing Velahope here, pointing out the fact that he has made all these removals and got a blitz. <laughs> oh, and without Mighty Blow as well, yeah. Well, he's got Mighty Blow on the Ogre, but um, without a skill pick. Surely now he's going to try and base him up a bit with, a, with you know, somebody back as a... Maybe the tackler back as a safety. Blitz the guys that don't have dodge. Yeah, I maybe would have gone a bit further back. Yeah, the ogre's been awful, hasn't it? It's been, it's been going, it's, the ogre's been going uh, boneheaded all the time. <laughs> been really bad. We've seen a lot of bad big guys this tournament. There's been some horrible, horrible tree men, and that was that was the blitz wasted from the ogre, wasn't it? Wow. But still, I, li I like the not over committing. Al although I would have maybe herped up base, base, base. I like the, uh, I like the not over committing here, not committing too much.
Death roll, oh man. Death roll. So yeah, a bit unlucky wasn't it? First first dice roll of the turn is a one. Was it first dice roll? Um first dot first two plus. Now that's the thing, I I you know he's I I quite like basing them up just because you know, they mostly don't have to. Yes. No, <laughs> Glorious, thank you very much. Tree, tree punched. Wow, it's another bonehead. Three boneheads in a row here. Um, thank you very much, Tree Punch 20XX. Thanks for staying fantastic. Oh, yeah. All right, sorry for my diplomacy, but you know I don't. I really don't want to offend anybody. I'm really not saying anyone's crap. Obviously, they're not crap. They've made the World Cup. Um, I shouldn't have to keep re repeating that I'm not insulting anybody, but I just know that people are are precious little snowflakes in this day and age, and get offended by all sorts. So you know, got to keep making it clear, haven't you? Now they're not crap, though. They're really not crap. I'm really not calling them crap, Rogan again. I'm really not calling them crap. <laughs> if they aren't crap, it's even better when you call them crap. <laughs> And I also I don't like being you know being the guy whose chat you know is is horrible to people you know I don't I don't want to be horrible to anybody you know <laughs> apologize for apologizing for a potter the ogre moved unbelievably finally finally the ogre moved. <laughs> Do you know what? Do you know what? It's funny. Someone said about how long you've been Canadian in chat. I tell you what, the funniest thing about Canadians being the people who apologise all the time, right, and are, are polite, is that they've stolen that from the British. Yet the British are too polite to complain about it <laughs> and, and, and just accept it. And we even have that taken away from us. <laughs> Fucking Canadians. <laughs> <laughs> so um yeah you know i i i do like how how Villa Hobbit, Villa Hobbit does seem to play similar to me and kind of like you know playing safe and conservative and what have you um yeah so naturally i'm going to kind of i'm going to kind of agree with it um more than maybe as I would with somebody who was a bit more aggressive. But again, that's not to say that he's right to not be aggressive, is it? <laughs> yeah. British holiday makers, but British holiday makers are absolute the lowest of the low. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah. To be fair, you can't really compare what essentially are who football hooligans to uh standard people <laughs> oh, dear. yeah there you go so i feel that's the thing you know that's that's the thing and you know it's um here's satterfield saying point out every shit shit play i do so i can improve yeah and and, and that's it you know i think that's that was one of the reasons why I made the channel. You know, why I wanted to stream in that was to was to kind of help people improve and stuff, wasn't it? So that's that again is why I'm kind of pointing out maybe suboptimal players. You know, even good players, really good players, can make mistakes or alternatively make moves that another good player wouldn't make and stuff like that. You know, there's more than there's more than one way to skin a cat, isn't there? Um, so yeah, that's it. <laughs> so 
So this this is very tricky for the Dark Elves now, isn't it? They've got they've got non non dodge based. They've just done a frenzy a frenzy trap. The first block the first block is a one dice anyway. They're really really running out of options. But it worked out anyway. Is is one dicer? He one dice to victory. And then the potato is fully activated. He's used his reroll. If he hadn't used his reroll, he could have GFI'd away from the tackler as well. Um, of course, his, of course, he, his course the GFI is a, is a one. Um, but yeah, it's two dice on the ball, isn't it? With probably tackle. Double GFI to get the hit. I still think that's better than, than hitting without tackle. Even though there's a good chance of the reroll being gone, and I don't know though, I don't I don't know if that's better or not. But um, I would certainly go for the double GFI to hit with tackle. Good chance of using the reroll though. No, he doesn't. And he does. He tackles no good. And uh, yeah, that's going to be some dice can be rolled by the dark elves now, can't they? More, more brutality for the Dark Elves. And I mean, this is this is a very easy clear here, isn't it? Um, two plus two dice, and then a two plus away from tackle. Um, you could maybe even screen it to get a turn or, turn or two store out of it, maybe. You could at least, like, kind of sideline cage. Don't know how far she can go. One more square. She could have gone there, he could have run around there. And there could have been... There could have been a bit of a screen. I think he's just going to score, though, isn't he? Yeah, I think I would have tried to get another turn of stall out of that. Um, just because, you know, I know Vela Hoppy is good and giving him three turns to score is not good. <laughs> Basically, I would have, I would have really tried to, to get the stall out there. Just even one more turn of stall could have been crucial. But now, three turns and two re-rolls against seven men. That's, uh, you've got to back him, haven't you? Although he's relying on, on agility three humans um, that could let him down. More than they would with owls. Yeah, Sky Talon says people that think they make no mistakes are usually bad, and don't get the chance to get better. Yeah, if everyone makes mistakes, and and you know, and and there's all sorts of pros and cons to different plays. So, the, you know, it's very rare that there'll be one. Oh, I guess there will be one statistically perfect play every turn, won't there? But. You know, different good players are going to see different good things, aren't they? So a pretty good, pretty good kick actually. Very sunny and a deep kick. So that was about the best the Dark Elves could have hoped for, really. Three dice of blocking. Mighty well. Does nothing. <laughs> Interesting on the two catches here. I don't know what the reasoning was there. Maybe so they could dodge away if the bone had on him. I guess he thought he was gonna pow. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Like, I'm not saying it's bad. <laughs> I'm really not saying it's bad. I don't think it's bad. I just think it's strange to have, strange to have the two catches on the LOS like that. I don't know why. 
why you would do it. I mean, I like the tackle back to defend the ball carrier. Um, but then he, you can't use him to punch forward, but then that's that's just, you've got to choose one or the other, haven't you? left a bit of room over here hasn't he? I imagine I imagine Velahopia will get this catcher to here so he can score without GFIs maybe even both of them maybe that was it, he wanted them both in the middle so that either they could go to either side like generally I guess people would have them on each side and I guess you put them in the middle so they could both go to one side I guess, I guess that's the I guess that's the reasoning there <laughs> I'm really far forward. Oh, he's just going. He's just going all scoring threats now, like an Elstor. I guess he's he's back far enough that he's safe. This is the this is the one, isn't it? Um, three, four, five, six, seven. I would have had him one square forward, but then you haven't got a screen. So yeah, it's a bit unfortunate. You'd, you'd want him one. Maybe this guy should have been one square back, so that he could have been one square. No, it doesn't work. Maybe this guy, one of these, should maybe have been one square forward, so he could have been one square forward. Because you'd like this is this is the guy you want to get the ball to, if he was one square closer. Because you can just hand off, and it's on your GFI to score. The others are basically false threats to, to split the team, pretty much. I mean, even though... Because he's not going to want to pass. Wow, he goes for the brave one dice on the ball. And block saves him. So, the block to protect again. And now I'm, I'm shocked he didn't make this three dice. That should have been three dice, shouldn't it? It wouldn't have been hard to make it three dice. I think that definitely should have made, definitely should have made that three dice. Um, I just because I think he could have done... He could have... Cancel the assist and he could have given the assist. Um, I think he should have definitely made that a three dice. So. And he's got a block here, hasn't he, to free the path? Does he? No, three. So again, there, you know, he, he could have made a block, but he doesn't because he saves his reroll because he's not going to make irrelevant blocks before the uh, crucial two plus with a reroll. Makes it simply overthought. My <laughs> fair enough. So there you go. Wesley Snipes gets it. <laughs> gets the win. Alright. So congrats to Villa Hope here there. I think you know, I mean he definitely got the look. He definitely got the look there with all the cars. Um you know, the the AV brakes in the cars. It doesn't look so good there, but it, it I think it was quite quite lucky AV brakes, but then did nearly make twice as many blocks. And I think definitely played better as well. And that's no disrespect to Parminian, but I do think Velahopia played. But then I like the way Velahopia plays because he does play similar to me. So, you know, um, certainly Parminian didn't play bad and his, his options were absolutely limited with how heavily he got outbashed without a mighty blow skill choice. Um, but you know, maybe uh, there was a few, there was a few dodgy moments I think from Parmenian, but you know, understandable with the pressure. And and look at the end, fellow hope he had a dodgy moment with only making a two dice block instead of a three dice block with the ogre. Um, the dice rolls, it's got to be funny. The the, the boneheads, sixty percent boneheads is pretty pretty unlucky. But um, there you go. Well played to both. Congrats to fellow hope here. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe and stay fantastic.